So we've kind of talked just recently about those um, upper winds that are westerly winds kind of following lines of latitude we call geostrophic winds but they tend to sometimes have some meandering so if we were gonna like take the the global winds and kind of flatten them out um, uh, we would call these Rossby waves and there are about three to six Rossby waves so like a crest to crest there's about three to six of those that encircle the earth at any given time. So they're just kind of little bits of what we call meandering of the westerly winds in the upper elevations. And we talked about the jet stream and they kind of meander with the jet stream, that tube of fast moving air. Um, these Rossby waves, and it's kind of like a like a soft S, Rossby, I think. These Rossby waves, they can um, kind of hang out at the same location for a long time, or they can kind of move slowly um, from west to east. Um, the Rossby waves are uh, uh, affected by the, the cells, what's going on in the Hadley cell, where the location of the intertropical convergence zone is, and the feral and the polar cells. So they do move around seasonally. Right, so what you're looking at here um, is probably one complete Rossby wave from, from uh, crest to crest. So there'd be three to six of those that encircle the, United, or encircle the world. So notice kind of nestled in the Rossby wave is the jet stream and I thought I would go ahead and show you in telecast um, jet stream. This is what I kind of wanted to do earlier, but um, so here we go. So the way in telecast does it is kind of probably common in that can you see uh, as far as the jet stream goes, this colored region up here is showing you the jet stream. There is no jet stream here. Um, so this would be what our polar jet stream, since we're here in March, it's kind of still up this way. It will migrate down as, the, um, as our season warms. So that is the current jet stream. Right, so um, I don't know. <laughs> the, these Rossby waves have certain consequences. Uh, as you might imagine, when they are... Uh, if you are north of um, the, the jet stream here that's kind of associated with these Rossby waves, you will tend to have kind of cold and stormy weather. If you're south, your weather will be warm, warmer and it may or may not be dry. Um, Let's see, the next slide we're going to kind of talk about how these Rossby waves, and can you kind of see the Rossby waves now? Um, let's see, North Pole is up here, so we can kind of see almost a complete kind of encircling of the air around the Earth. That's kind of a set of Rossby waves. So if the Rossby waves are pretty straight, in other words, if there aren't very many Rossby waves per se, we say that the flow is zonal. And I kind of remember the word zonal by like a football player who is going to make a pass to the end zone. It's going to be straight. Okay, so zonal flow is the opposite of meridional flow. And meridional flow would be kind of the, the waviness. Okay, and here in a minute we're going to see that waviness can actually kind of have uh, consequences for isolating chunks of air. I think that's kind of interesting. So meridional flow is the significant north and south flow, okay, with kind of the waves. Um, zonal, if the, if the air loft is zonal, not much wiggle to it, uh, basically the weather you have is the weather you're going to keep and compare that to if you have a fair bit of, um, of wiggle in your upper, uh, in your, uh, upper winds, your meridional flow, then what that's going to do is, like for instance, this segment here is going to bring cold air down, and this segment here is going to bring warm air up. 
And of course, if you can get cold and warm to meet or clash, a lot of times that's when you're gonna get your severe weather or at least some sort of precipitation. Uh, meridonial flow, so these would be kind of the peak and trough sort of things. Um, they tend to, let's see, it intensifies, um, it intensifies the jet streams. And what they can do then, meridonial flow, is it will create these, at the Earth's surface, these alternating low pressure and high pressure. And just to kind of remind you, when we see a central low on the surface map, kind of be thinking some sort of clouds or precipitation. And if you see a central high pressure, be thinking that, oh, there's a good chance you'll have clear skies uh, with that system or when that system gets to us. Meridonial flow, I'm going to show you here in a minute, that actually can be so wiggly that basically it can pinch off a sector of air. I'm going to show you how that works. Okay, so let's just say I'm going to show you four, four, four figures here, and I'm going to start with the zonal flow. And notice that there's not much wiggle here, and we have the north pole up here. Now notice that we do have some wiggle. We have some meridonial flow going on. And keep an eye on this region right here. Notice that it's getting so, I don't say so meridonial flowish, but actually this is creating um, a central low pressure right there. And this thing is going to break off. Just looks like an amoeba, doesn't it? So this right here is this. It broke off. And so what is that? Well, that's cold air now headed south, kind of on its own. And notice what happened to the, um, the flow aloft. Now it's back to zonal flow.